Okay, hi there. In the second of our series of five short videos looking at building better analysis diagrams for the labour market, let's spend a few minutes thinking about the impact of a minimum wage. So how can we use labour, demand and supply diagrams to analyse a minimum wage and provide the platform for a very good evaluation in your exam questions? When I think about the impact of a minimum wage, again, you'd probably contextualise this and talk about the impact on a the effect on a particular occupation, or whatever it is, the market for people working in food processing or people working in the market for textiles, what have you. The equilibrium wage, if left to the market here, would be W1 with E1 people employed. And if you place a minimum wage in the market, to have any effect, it needs to be set above the free market wage, which I've done here. That has two effects, of course. It causes an expansion of labour supply to E3 and a contraction of labour demand to E2. So again, this is the standard diagram which many students would draw for a minimum wage intervention, where the minimum wage can lead to an excess supply of labour. Uh, the key thing, as far as I'm concerned, is the impact on employment. If you draw the labour demand curve, as I have done here, LD1, as relatively inelastic, wage inelastic, then quite a chunky increase in the minimum wage shown there only leads to a relatively small fall in employment. Yes, there are more people looking for work, B, at the minimum wage, but employment contracts to point A. And uh, you can make a case for saying that that would be beneficial. Uh, those people in work, E2, then they're getting a higher pay level. Yes, we've lost a bit of employment, but uh, there's been an increase in, in total earnings to labour. Now, the key thing, I think, in exams is to develop your diagrams, build slightly more developed, complicated diagrams. So you get analysis marks that move beyond the ordinary and you get into the higher grade marks. So build or develop your analysis diagram to show the possible effects of a minimum wage on jobs, on employment, when the demand for labour curve, which of course comes from employers, becomes more wage elastic. In other words, more sensitive to changes in the wage. So LD2 here uh, is uh, a more elastic demand curve. And for the same increase in the minimum wage, uh, instead of employment falling from E1 to E2, uh, the number of people in work falls from E1 to E3. You move up the demand curve to point D. Now, this is a good diagram because it suggests that the employment effect of a minimum wage could be more sizable uh, and therefore that uh, you can build that of course into your evaluation. More people losing their jobs, who knows, perhaps employers uh, substituting uh, uh, labour for capital in security guards or self-scanning machines in supermarkets etc. So the impact of a minimum wage depends in part on the wage elasticity of demand for labour. And this diagram would be an excellent analysis diagram to draw in the exam to show that you really have this, this idea, this concept, this theory uh, under control. Build your analysis diagram to show the effects on the minimum wage on labour productivity. Again, what might happen here, again, it's a might, not a will, but the high minimum wage could elicit an increase in labour productivity. Perhaps partly psychological, if people are being paid more, they might be more motivated to work. Employers might train their workers uh, to a greater intensity, uh, provide them with more capital to, to work, and therefore there could be what's sometimes called an efficiency wage effect. I've drawn this in this way, so the minimum wage goes up. Ordinarily, employment would fall to point A from E1 to E2, but... And notice that labour demand curve, if there's more productivity, if the value of the output workers producing has gone up, then in theory, employers might be more likely to employ labour. So in fact, at the minimum wage, they might employ E4 workers now instead of, of E2. In other words, if productivity goes up, then the minimum wage might actually cause an increase in employment at the minimum wage. Again, the point I'm making here as revision is just developing the diagram a little bit, taking it one stage further, can help the analysis and then automatically it helps the evaluation. To what extent is productivity linked to the minimum wage? What happens if firms are making less profit? Do they have the, the funds to invest in more efficient technology and so on, so, so on and so forth? Developing these ideas, I think, is crucial to getting top marks at A-level and IB. 
in the third of our short series, I'll take a look at how you can use labour demand supply diagrams to show the effects of inward migration.